Let's talk to Craig Earlham. He is a senior market analyst at Oanda. Very good morning to you, Craig. Good morning. Right, I'm asking everybody what on earth is going on at the moment. Um, this is all about inflation, 10-year money, 3% target, equity markets wobbly, people um, making a lot of money or losing a lot of money, um, trading volatility. Um, we've had people come on to about market crashes, everyone saying after the event, oh, it's a healthy correction. That's great, but not with my money. What's on your <laughs> mind this morning? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it is a combination of factors. I don't think there is one thing that we can attribute this to. And when you look at the event itself, which seemed to trigger the move, it typically suggests there's a number of underlying factors and the markets are just vulnerable so that when you do see one level taken out, then all of a sudden everything starts tumbling. It's almost like this domino effect. It doesn't say a lot about sentiment in the near term. It almost says that people are looking at the markets right now and saying, this correction's coming, this correction's coming. I need to be prepared. So when you see the first sign of it and everyone starts to dart for the exit, it's just typically a sign that the market's a bit overbought and a bit ahead of itself. Like I say, no one likes healthy corrections when their money's at stake, but ultimately in the long term, since when have markets ever gone up in a straight line? You look at the last two years and it's not unprecedented by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not common either for markets to go up in the way they have. So that's probably contributed to the sharp and sharp sell off that we saw the volatility that's ensued after uh, i do think it will settle down i do think we will start to see markets start to find their feet again uh, and carry on because ultimately and i think i said this last week fundamentally that i don't see the any big concern we the earnings figures we just had from the us for example were mostly positive the yep. one-off tax reform measures probably had an impact on certain um, bottom line re uh, reports but ultimately they look healthy and strong and there's a lot of optimism. Uh, Europe, I think, is going to show much of the same, of course, from a different perspective. Um, and the economic data is improving. Uh, I think what we're seeing a sign of here is how sensible central banks now have to be because if they start to move too aggressively, markets will very quickly react in such a way that causes this instability and this volatility. Okay, so... For me, the VIX is trading in backwardation at the moment. I the front ends is is suggesting mm -hmm. that there's going to be more volatility at the moment. Is this the time where investors, traders, and the, the people should really take a back step, or is this just perfect? Um, you know, I read so many people making lots and lots of money because the swings are mad and wild, but it's pretty darn difficult to trade it, isn't it? It always depends on what kind of a perspective you're taking. If you're taking a long-term perspective, then these big dips are probably seen as quite attractive and you can stomach the volatility which will ensue in the middle because typically you're not intraday trading when you're looking at, for example, for where, where, to, where to allocate your pension, for example. So if you see big dips like this, then potentially you're looking at this as an attractive buying points that you maybe would have thought that you'd have struggled to find uh, over the course of the past six months at these opportunities. Um, if you're an intraday trader, volatility is of course very good. Now there's obviously people who are going to get stung along the way, that's what happens in these volatile markets, but it seems for years we've complained and a lot of people have complained about the lack of volatility yep. in the market. So when volatility does come back, naturally, as humans, we like to complain about the fact that there's too much volatility, we're never happy. I, I think it's interesting, I think, it's, uh, I think there's opportunities everywhere as a result of it and ultimately I don't think it's going to be catastrophic and that's the most important thing. Okay, well I read over the weekend gold is old, um, Bitcoin's <laughs> the new uh, mantra, um, you've sent a gold daily chart in, obviously inflation with a capital I is making the headlines, what are, you, what are your thoughts on gold? Um, I mean I, I, the, I think this whole gold is old thing is a bit hopeful, I think um, I think there's still a, an awfully long way to go before Bitcoin could ever be considered to be uh, to be the replacement for gold. And I think the volatility and the wild swings we've seen in for Bitcoin since the middle of December, it's, or even since really the middle of October, September time, says everything about why it's not the gold replacement. Gold's meant to be the safe haven. Gold's yeah, meant to sure. be your reliable friend. There's nothing reliable about Bitcoin. So um, this idea that, uh, that Bitcoin's here to replace it, I think, is a bit uh, optimistic and a bit... Uh, a bit ahead of itself. Um, I think gold, we're just seeing very typical um, moves being played out here. Yes, gold did not act as this ultimate safe haven necessarily through this volatile period, but we've got to, what we saw during this volatile period was money moving back to the dollar, the dollar rega regaining some of that safe haven so, status. So is gold the, a safe haven play, or is this purely about the currency in the US dollar? I think the dollar weighed on this in this 
particular situation. But when we think of what triggered this move was this higher earnings figure from the jobs report in the US, this expectation of higher interest rates, all on the back of those Fed minutes, which were much more hawkish, this all favoured the dollar. So ultimately that weighed on gold and offset, you would imagine some of this safe haven uh, play that you would typically associate with gold. We are starting to see it recover again. We're in line with a little bit of dollar weakness in the near term. Ultimately, in the longer term, gold remains an inflation hedge. So, if we are anticipating more inflation from the US, then gold may be seen as a, a particularly interesting play here, especially as long as the, go as the dollar remains weak. So, there's always a number of factors at play that we have to take into consideration. There's the inflation play, the safe haven play, and the dollar play. And it's about weighing up which factors are going to have the biggest bearing on it yep. in, this, in this case. We're looking at this right now. The dollar's been a little bit weak and gold has made that rebound. Ultimately, we're looking at this and 1300, 1350 just are the key levels right now. There's always a little bit room for manoeuvre, so we've come back to 1295s at times. We've gone as high as, say, 1360. Um, but it seems quite content in this range between 13, 1350 with the 25 offering support and resistance in between. Um, I think gold just remains elevated in the near term, just simply because the dollar is and is 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 very relatively uncertain, and even throughout this volatility and repricing of Fed interest rate expectations, gold didn't exactly plummet. We stayed above thirteen hundred, and the dollar didn't exactly soar; it rebounded. Um, I think in these volatile markets, people will always still look for the safe havens at the moment, this moment in time. Um, and I think the, if we are anticipating further inflation, and I think, again, gold just keeps that little bit of support. So 1300, 1350 just remains Trade key levels range, for me. As they say. And uh, should we see a break higher, then maybe that could suggest a move back towards the kind of 1400s with 1375 in the interim. But I think the hold above 1300 just looks quite comfortable at the moment. On that note, Craig, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.